think so. Yeah. All right. So. So I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Like, this means a lot to me. People are always like, oh, envision your debut. And, like, Emily kind of talked about before, like, when I do something, I just, like, put my head down and I run. Like, there's no time for visualization. <laughs> like, I just don't have time to do something. But I wanted to thank everybody for um, coming out to here to celebrate. This truly, to me, this is not about me. This is about my unit that are sitting here and represented. This isn't even a half or a quarter of them. And we just have the most, I think we have the most amazing unit in Mary Kay. I might be prejudiced, but <laughs> I just, I really do. So, and um, I just want you girls to know that you are an exceptional group of girls. Our success, our speed would not have happened if you weren't who you are. So just know that going forward tonight. Okay, so some of you may not know, or, well, I'm like kind of blue half my story out of the water, so sorry. <laughs> this is my second time in Mary Kay. I refer to myself as a born-again consultant. <laughs> I started once in, um, I think it was 2005, and I actually started just to help Emily use, or earn her first career car, so that's kind of fun. Um, I was working full-time as an RN, and I did some parties here and there just for the fun, and I did all right at it. I was decent. Um, I took a different job in 2007, switching from hospital work to hospice and home care, and I thought I would keep up with Mary Kay, but I didn't. Life just got busy, and I just didn't keep it a priority at the time, so I just phased out. That's the great thing about this business. So in the fall of 2009, after, after having excelled to a lead RN in our, in our home care office quickly, um, something really awful happened to me, and I'm not going to go into detail about it because it really truly is too painful and negative to go back there. But what I learned quickly is that the people around me who said that they would vouch for me in my name and my exemplary employee record did not, and an employer who I'd given my heart, soul, and guts for did not fight for me either. <clears throat> I was in a very dark place for a long time. I took jobs bartending, I eventually got another nursing job for a while, and then in the spring of 2012, Tim got deployed to Afghanistan. I was working at a nursing home at the time and had to take a break from that. The money from deployment sustained our living needs, and I didn't work that summer while he was gone. I learned how to play golf, and I spent a lot of time with friends to pass the time. In the fall, he came home, and I went down to Peoria to be with him while he finished out his active duty orders at his reserve station. I had this freedom because I wasn't working. Um, but I didn't have any money coming in, and, and I hated solely relying on his paycheck. You see, I, I had applied for jobs that summer. I had applied for like secretarial work because I thought that I would enjoy that. And I got rejected from them because they're like, oh, you're not qualified enough. I'm like, I can save your life. I can't file papers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. I will never forget where I was when I started thinking about Mary Kay. I was sitting next to a pool in Peoria waiting for Tim to get done with duty. <laughs> you weren't even around yet. <laughs> I remember sitting on that chair in that Indian day in September, and for some reason Mary Kay popped into my mind. I started thinking about women <coughs> who became sales directors and women who owned cars. And I thought, <laughs> can't get the bottle up. I thought, why not me? I also found it appealing that I didn't have to go to interviews um, or fill out applications. I thought about how successful Emily was in the company. I'm very nervous, if you can tell. <laughs> and maybe I could be too. I remember going back up to the room and telling him what I was thinking about doing. I think he said go for it. I can't really remember. All that I remember was that he was supportive. I think to be honest, he just wanted me to do anything at that point. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask him today, his story is that he had suggested it before and I told him like, no way in heck am I doing that Mary Kate thing again. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> So I don't really remember what proceeded, I just remember I signed my beauty agreement on September 20th and I came in with a full inventory because this was now the plan. Came to my first meeting at Kathy Larson's unit. What I saw was women of all ages, shapes, sizes, etc. doing this and doing it successfully. It solidified my original thought of, if they can, why can't I? And so I took off running. I have worked hard and I have worked not so hard. This business is like owning any other business. There are harvest seasons and there are sowing seasons. But I believe the secret truly is to never quit. <laughs> it's clearly past the time. <laughs> At 
conference we heard a saying from a national sales director, and it was, whose dreams are tied to your success? Emily, I want to thank you for letting my dreams be tied to your successes and for always believing in me. I would also like to thank every other Mary Kincaid consultant and director in this room for allowing my dream to be continually tied to your success. Thank you to Kathy Larson for being my first adopted sales director and welcoming you with open arms. Bobby Mays, thank you for being my first running buddy. Amy Zantel, thank you for including me in your unit. You give me inspiration. Jennifer Hammond and Sheila Vandenhoeven. <laughs> my mom here tonight taking care of Rowan. Thank you for your unwavering belief in my dreams. I'm not a fire. <laughs> are now. <laughs> and being my biggest cheerleader along the way. To my in-laws, Stephen Beth, I could not have been blessed with better in-laws. The way you give up your time, talents, and possessions so freely is unable to express with words. Jeremiah 29 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Thank you, Lord, for having a plan for me when I didn't have one for myself. 